So hello everyone, this is Jose. I'm the partner technology strategist from Microsoft Hong Kong. Um, and my main role is to um, empower different partners with company to use um, latest Microsoft technology and build their own solutions. So um, today during my section, I'll cover how to use a Microsoft pre-trained AI model to solve different business challenges. So with no further ado, let's get started. So um, welcome again to the Microsoft Online Tech Forum. And again, today's topic will be using the pre-built AI to solve different business problems. And in case you are wondering where you can find the resources for, for this section, um, please refer to the below links. Um, the slides and the deck will be shared after this section. For what does this actually mean to use pre-built AI services um, and solve different business problems? So it's actually mean that adding different human-like capabilities to your applications and your solutions, such as the vision capabilities, the speech capabilities, or different language understanding capabilities. So let's say, for example, you can give um, your app the power of speech, say by adding a chat interface, and then you can also embed some speech-to-text functions in the text and interface. And then you can also empower your applications with the vision capabilities, like um, including some computer vision capabilities, allowing your apps to do OCR or object detection. And then you can also give your app the power to understand what users like, like um, having the contacts and then providing um, the white recommendations, personalized recommendations. And then fourth of all, you can also um, add the language handling capabilities into application, like translate different texts or translate different speech into another language. And last but not least, it's about the um, knowledge or understanding capabilities, like to identify the abnormality or the spikes for different um, unusual behaviors in logs or in data. So um, I've gone through a few scenarios of how like featuring the AI um, capabilities can empower an applications. But right before that, um, for doing AI, it often requires a lot of data and a lot of technical expertise, right? So um, imagine that you have often heard of terms like data scientists or deep learning models. All of those things requires a huge amount of effort to develop in order to be ready for productions. So um, what Azure Cognitive Services actually is, is a set of pre-trained AI APIs that allow you to easily consume and then embed the AI capabilities inside your application quickly, instead of having to have your own data scientist, your own team of data engineer to train a model for yourself. So Azure Cognitive Services includes a lot of APIs, but at the broadest level, um, these are some of the categories that it includes. For example, for vision, is the understanding of images or drawings, as well as videos. And then for speech, is the tools to understand and then also handle different speech and then human um, voice content from human. And also for language, it's about um, giving the capabilities for your application to understand the content of different written documents and texts, as well as translating between them. Then um, we also have the decision. Decision is a newer type of um, Azure Cognitive Services. It's more about um, letting the application to do human-like um, decision making um, based on different contexts so that it can do like um, content moderator kind of stuff, or it can provide personalized info uh, recommendation to the users. And last but not least, you can also include some search um, capability in your applications, um, which is powered by our Bing Search API. So you can actually let users to search through in your application using um, images or just text query. So um, for today, since we have a limited amount of time, I'll be mainly focusing on the vision um, category um, of Cognitive Service API, including the computer vision, which is our pre-trained computer vision um, object detection model. And then we have also a custom vision API, which allow you to 
um, trained on top of our previous model and the custom level models. And then I'll also cover the personalizer API, which is used to provide um, personalized recommendation um, for users in the application. So first of all, let's talk at uh, let's take a look at the pre-built AI for computer vision, and how can we use it to give an application the ability to um, see. So this is our typical website for Tailwind traders. It is a virtual company that we made up in order to illustrate different um, technology scenarios. And in this case, you can see that this is the company website, and it. It's basically a e uh, uh, online shopping site where people can buy different kind of um, supplies. And one of the AI enabled features in this online shopping site is the shop by photo um, functions. These features allows the customers to actually upload a image that uh, of a similar product that they want to buy or to purchase, and then the app will identify the similar products that is available in this Tailwind Trader catalog. So for example, you can see that I uploaded a drill pictures and then it recommends me or it returns me the results of an other drill that is offered in this site. And then I can also upload a different image this time. Let's say, for example, I want to upload a pair of pills. But this time it actually gave me not that accurate of a result. It actually provided me a result of a hammer, which is not actually something that I want. So you can see here that this is actually the limitation of a pre-built uh, uh, computer vision models. It's actually not fitted to the specific scenarios, and there may be some situation that the result is inaccurate. And we'll cover about how to um, cater this kind of scenario and to increase the accuracy of your computer vision model by using custom vision later on. Um, but before doing that, I think it's actually helpful to dive into just a bit of the theory of how computer vision actually works. So um, don't worry, there will be not that much of a mathematics or computer science stuff. It's just want to give you a basic understanding of what is actually behind the technology that's empowering the computer to see. So um, not really long ago, um, it actually would be science fiction to talk about giving computer the ability to, to actually see or do things that the human eyes can. And the HK, uh, XKCD was published in, um, back in 2014, which is the first set of like articles talking about how computer vision can be done. And right after five years, you can see not only Microsoft, but a lot of companies are opening on this kind of technologies and APIs that allow you to do a lot of vision stuff with computing. So um, I won't dive into the um, deep details or technology details of how computer vision works, but um, here's a really good blog by Brandon. It's actually talk about how neural networks works which is basically the technology behind that is empowering computer vision or all kinds of AI scenarios. So um, I won't have time to go into the details, but please feel free to go on his blog and to learn more after this section. So by now, I believe that you have um, probably heard about something called deep learning, which is a category of machine learning. And the deep in deep learning, um, actually means that there are many layers that uh, neural network model contains. And whenever a image is uh, passed through, and an image is actually passed through that neural network in order to do the training as well as the classification. So um, on the screen, you can see that this is a pretty simple um, neural network with only five layers, including the input layers and the output layers. So this is designed to input a single image and then classify it into one of the four categories, including the dog, the bicycle, apple, and the tennis ball. And yeah, it is not um, capable of detecting any object outside of these four labels. And when a neural network is trained, um, the definition of trained, I'll cover it uh, a bit uh, little 
later on, it actually passes the image through the network layer by layers. And in each layers, the image is actually transformed into a smaller bit of image, smaller and smaller and smaller. And on the further end, it just turns into a single value, a single pixel, which is represented by a value between zero and one. You can see here for each different categories, there's a single value between zero and one. And this is actually the confidence score representing how confident the neural network is to define that, to determine that image is under this category. So for example, under the category bicycle, the score is 0 0.83. So it means that neural network believes there is a 83% of chance that this image can be classified as, as bicycle. And that's pretty good because this image is a bicycle. So how do you actually get from here to here? So how do you actually train a model? So each node in a dual network is representing a weight. Oops, sorry. And the concept of training a dual network is to determine the weights in such a way that the white numbers actually comes out in the end of the neural network. And that requires a lot of training data, right? You have probably heard of this term already. So for example, if we want to classify between dog, bicycle, apple, or tennis ball, we would need a lot of image for dogs, bicycle, apples, and tennis ball. And because there are so many millions combination of the weights that can be applied for the image, like how do we actually determine the right value in the nodes in order to provide an accurate result? This is usually the point where most tutorials or machine learning books will dive into the mathematics or the statistics. Um, we're not going to do it here, but I also want to include, uh, introduce you the terms of back propagation. This is how a neural network is trained. It's trained by doing different trials and see, because we have a lot of training data, which is labeled it. For example, we provide 100 uh, image of a dog and then we already labeled it as a dog. We can put it through different iterations into a neural network and see what is the result. With the result is accurate, then we shouldn't need to tune much of the weight. But if the result is inaccurate, then we can tune the weight and then do another iteration. We do all this kind of iteration until the result or the object detected matches with the label the data. And here is just a function to determine how the neural network actually is trained it and how the weight is actually updated. I won't go through into the details here, but one thing that I really want to mention is well, nowadays there are a lot of computing resources and tools that can help you to do this kind of training or to do the maths. You have probably already heard about frameworks like TensorFlow or PyTorch, and you'll heard about them and you'll hear more about them um, in other sections in this online form. But even with this kind of framework and the data, you still need um, many technology professionals as well as a lot of time or computing resources to actually train the model. And that is not a easy, not easy effort for most of the companies. So that's why we trained the models and we try to make it generic, as generic as possible, and then expose it to the public as a pre-trained API. So now let's try a quick demonstration of using a pre-trained AI model, which is our cognitive services computer vision. So for example, I can go to here. This is the computer vision site. It's uh, including uh, included our pricing, our documentation, and different kind of stuff. And the first thing you can do here is to submit a image 
to do the detection. So here I'll just browse a blend of image. So you can see I have a set of different test image here. And after submitting it, you can see that it already provided me with some tags, like the tag is a two and there's a confidence score of 85%. So it actually thinks that that is an 85% chance that this single pictures belong to the categories of two. And I think that it may think that this is as a weapon because it has the shape of a gun. But this is basically what you can try and experience using um, the computer vision sites. So um, let's go back a bit to the slides. So this is actually the example of the output of an image that is put into the uh, image analysis using computer vision. You can see there are two key extractors. One is the objects. This basically um, determines what the models can actually um, detect in the image. For example, it detects a headwear in the image as well as a person in the image. And then the rectangle is just basically given by its coordinates. So this is actually the coordinate that is provided in order to create a bounding box for the human face as well as the helmets. Then you can see there's another key called tags. This basically include um, all the tags that is detected or um, that the image um, things that is contained it, uh, in the image. So for example, it can find out that a man is included in the image, a clothing is included in the image, a helmet is included in the image. And all these tags already have a competence score provided. So you, when you actually use the API in your uh, project, you can determine how accurate or how much you want to trust the models on doing the classifications. So in case the confidence score is actually not high enough, you can actually pass it back to human for the further analysis or the classification. So you can interface to uh, or consume the Cognitive API using any language you want. Basically, you just need to be able to connect to, uh, to an HTTP endpoint. And what I have here is a bash script that is used to create the Cognitive Service resources, as well as connecting to the Computer Vision API using curl. So if you are familiar with the um, tools uh, regarding Azure, you may have heard of uh, the Azure CLI, which you can in install and run yourself. And But here, I'm using the Azure CLI extension for VS Code, so I don't need to um, additionally install uh, another stuff. So you can see that once I installed the extension, like here, I can directly run my commands inside Visual Studio Code instead of outside and using an other command line too. So the first thing that I have created here, the, or the first command that I usually here is to create a resource group. So I need to provide it with the name um, uh, as well as the location. Then I'm going to create a new content services resources. And I need to, um, of course, define where the location to be at, um, the name of uh, which resource group with, do I want to put this resource in it. Okay. And then next up is to create the content services key. This key is actually the most important API key. It's, you use this to communicate with all the content services including computer vision. So you basically include this key in your API call in the headers in order to be um, authorized to call the API. So 
so for example, here I am um, extracting a image for online, and I'm using that image to call the computer vision API. And you can see in the curl command, I've defined it uh, API key at a key that I just created, and I'm able to actually call use the API using curl directly in the terminal in VS Code. And we can um, use that with all different kind of image. For example, again, I can just replace the um, image URL here with another image, which is a jewel. And I can call the API again. So one thing, strange thing here, you can see that the return the result of the text is actually a camel, but I actually passed it the drill to the API. So this is pretty strange, right? So again, this is the limitation of the pre-trained computer vision model. Sometimes it may not be um, accurate enough to detect or classify the image in certain specific scenarios. So by this time, I think you probably see that why the pre-built computer vision API may not be suitable for all cases, including like for the shop by photo features at the Tailwind Trader website. The reason is that the pre-trained model may sometimes be not trained to classify specific models or specific objects that you need. Like for example, there is not a tag uh, or the drill which this object is trained in the pre-built model. And then sometimes the pre-built model is trained for to detect too many kinds of objects. And that's actually providing noise to the model because sometimes you don't you don't need to determine between a thousand different kinds of objects. You only need to determine whether it's apple or orange, or in this case, whether it's a helm hammer or whether it's a helmet. So um, pretty fortunately, um, using Azure Cognitive Services, you can actually fix that by using a custom vision model. And this is how it works. So this is basically sorry, the neural network that we have trained up before. But this time, in, um, the replace of the final outcome, we only provide two uh, targeted um, objects, which is the hammer or the hard hat. So we only need to pass the training image between uh, uh, for the hammer or for the hat. And it will return and the model will return a binary indicator to determine whether the um, inputted image is a hammer or a hat. So this provide, first of all, you have additional training samples for these two labels. And second of all, it remove all the noises or the other tags that you don't need. You don't need to know whether this is a uh, uh, orange or you don't need to know whether this is an apple. You only need to know whether this is a hammer or a hat. And last of all, again, you can have only two confidence score that is shared between the hammer and the hard hat. So of course, in this case, you'll see that it correctly identifies the hard hat as a hard hat. So of course, um, we were talking about pre-trained AI model, right? So you don't need to handle all the neural network stuff by yourself. You can instead actually leverage our custom vision features, which is part of the cognitive services. And then you only need to provide your own image, which is labeled in order in a drop and drag and drop interface in order to train on top of the previous model. 
And after you actually train it using um, your own set of image, um, you can directly expose it as an other API endpoint and then consume it similar to the way that you consume the computer vision API. So let's see a quick example of how you actually train your own custom vision model using the custom vision portal. So this is a sample of the custom vision for the web interface. So it is providing us a pretty nice user interface where we can um, provide new images to um, train our custom model. As and you can see that I've already included um, different images or different yeah images of different tools in the model for training. And this time we want to add another type of tools, which is the hard hats. So I will need to include uh, a set of a lot of images to train for the label hard hats. So I've clicked the add image, I've selected all the images in my training sample folders. And I can simply tag this or tag all this image as hard hat and then upload the image for training. So after the images are uploaded, one thing that you can notice is that for each tag or the each label of different um, image, the training sample or the amount of training sample is actually not that much. For example, um, there's only 23 samples for the um, category hard hats, and then there are only 16 samples for drill. This because that this is not training from scratch for this custom vision model. You are indeed um, training on top of our generic, generic models. So the amount of training samples needed is actually not that much. So you can see that after I press train, um, this will provide me with the result that is for that um, training, including the precisions, the recall, etc. And one thing to note here is about the probability threshold. This actually determines the limit or the confidence that the models have to have in order to actually do prediction. So for example, if you um, set the probability trail to 50%, then the model won't do any classification if they have 50% confidence level or less. So 90.9% .9 of those predictions are actually correct, and that's precise. And going back a little bit, oops, at 88.2% overall of all our image are classified it correctly. And that is the recall. So these are the metrics that is used it to evaluate one of the, the classification model. So in your application, you can choose your own um, probability threshold based on the application scenarios. So let's say for Tailwind traders, we can set the threshold on the low side because even with the application suggests a wrong or inaccurate product to the customers, the harm is not too big. But if you're doing a cancer detection app, you will likely want to set the threshold to be really high because you can afford to make a mistake. So sorry that I have to skip a bit. So yeah, after evaluating the model, you can actually do a quick test on it to um, test it with an image that is not provided as part of the training samples. So again, I, after I put a test, I can just select the image that I want to test it with, like it. And you can see that it's about 99.9% .9 confidence on classifying this as a hard hat. And then we can also, of course, try another image with the drill. And that's about 94.5% uh, confidence that this is a drill. 
So this actually determines that the overall model or the custom version model have a great, great um, performance. Just with less than 200 training samples overall or the total, total for all of the tags. So now that we are happy with our model um, or the performance, we can actually export it and then and then import it into our app. So you can just click export and then you can see different platform for you to export the model. For example, TensorFlow, which you probably have heard of. And then at this time, we'll choose Onyx, which is the open neural level exchange. And yeah, you can see that a zip file is exported based on this custom vision model. So what is actually Onyx? Onyx is an open standard that is launched by um, Microsoft and Facebook um, to promote the free exchange and deployment of AI models. And it's supported by a wide range of application as well as Tor defenders. And since we have already trained our custom vision model, we can integrate it with our Tailwind Trader app by exporting into a Onyx file. So we'll create a new interface section from the Onyx file created. So here in the web application, I can define the file path to the Onyx file that is just exported. Then we can pass it into the existing search feature of the Tailwind Trader. And then in order for us to uh, have a better uh, classification of the uploaded image compared to the pre-trained computer vision model. And you can see that um, the file that we actually extracted is just a zip file. And the uh, actual Onyx file will be opened it. It's just a text representation of the neural network that we just trained. And you can see that actually the in our existing website, we already have a uh, Onyx model deployed called a product Onyx. The problem with this model is that it doesn't properly recognize all of the products that we sell at Tailwind Traders. So we will take the newly created and exported uh, model.onyx files we just exported from Custom Fusion and then rename it and then replace it with uh, replace the existing Onyx file in our application. So I'm going into the um, uh, online uh, console for the web application. It's provide me with the console where I can have directly integrate with it. In, but also, of course, you can just use your local command line portal and then SSH into the application as well. So here, I find the uh, directory where I'm actually storing the Onyx model, the previous one. And then I would like to replace it with the new one. So I can just click upload and then or I can just drag it into here. And then it will replace the existing Onyx model. And of course, I need to restart the web app in order for the new model to take effect. So you can see after replacing the old model with the new one, I can again, this time use the new functions, the shop by photo function. And if I select the image that is um, you know, wrongly classified, this time it should be able to classify it correctly. With the plus. Okay. 
And yes, you can see that this time actually provide me with the um, correct set of recommendation compared with the old pre-trained model, which is using the, which actually give me a result of a hammer. So now that you've seen a few ways where you can use both the pre-trained computer vision model or the custom vision model to enhance your application, um, let's wrap up with a few things that you should keep in mind if you plan to deploy this application in production scenario. So first of all, for many huge company or enterprise, the data consideration is here. So may you, you may not know that um, where your data is going or how it will be used. So for example, when you are doing a classification, when you upload a image or some data, it is processed by Azure Cognitive Services, but it is never stored. So after the analysis, it is immediately discarded. And you can refer to the details in our compiling sites. And then um, for some customers, they may have the concern of still just uploading their image to our public cloud. So we provide another option for you to deploy the model as a Docker image. So you can actually run that containers locally. And then whenever you want to do classification or analysis, you just send the image to the containers endpoint instead of the public cloud endpoint. So this allows uh, actually a on-premises implementation of the cognitive services. And last but not least, um, please st um, stay ethical when you are using all these kind of AI applications. And you can, of course, find more details into uh, our approach to AI or when we talk about AI for uh, ethics for AI in this site. And this is pretty much it for today's presentation. So um, thank you very much for um, joining the Microsoft Online Forum again. I hope you enjoyed this section as well as the other sections we provide. And please let me know if you have any questions in the Q&A section. Thank you.